Lydia Clark's cool style began at the age of five. At 12, she studied piano, organ, flute, and voice, playing in symphonies and bands, and at Sandia, Santa Fe Conservatory of Music, now performing in rock, jazz, country, blues, Dixieland, and gospel bands and musicals. She serves as a music director, Santa Fe Center for Spiritual Living in Santa Fe. Please welcome <laughs> Lydia Clark. I'm really grateful to be here today, and we're, um, we're going to do this community song is what I've got in my order of service here. And um, we're, we're going to do a new song for you. It's actually called Alleluia. And it's for you to participate with, uh, with Mike and myself. The words are really easy. Alleluia. 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 <laughs> and there's some singing in between that I'll be doing. But um, once you hear the melody, please sing along with us. And um, if you hear a harmony that you're so inclined to sing, please do. I want you to know that when Reverend Darlene called me and asked me to be the special music, I was real excited about being here. I happened to meet her last summer when I was at Hummingbird Music Camp, and she came up to um, visit with some of your congregation that are also teachers there, um, Kamatara and her husband. 
And so um, we had a, a great time talking, and, and um, she called, and I said, well, you know, I'm going to have to get back to you because I am the music director at the, the Center for Spiritual Living in Santa Fe, so it means I have to get somebody to sub for me. Well, I managed to do that, and when I called her back and, and said, yes, I'm happy to be here, she said, well, I also want you to deliver the lecture. And I said, Re really? And she said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I want you to weave your music into the talk. And the topic is the need for love. Well, February, go figure, you know, love, oh, sure. Well, obviously, this is not normally what I'm doing. I'm usually sitting back here behind the keyboard, directing the band and, and those kinds of things. And I thought, wow, hmm. I, this, this might be a little difficult for me to do. How am I going to do this? And I said, oh, this isn't as difficult as I'm making it out to be. Music is an extension of my thoughts and my words. Easy for me to, to share this with you. As well as the fact that there are at least a million songs that have been written about love. A million. All, all you need is love, love me tender, unrequited love, um, love that's from afar. You, you could go on and on and on. And certainly a huge number of my songs are about love. And not just about love, about love, peace, hope, faith, and joy. So I began preparing and thinking that I would speak about my musical journey and the influences into writing songs about love. The need for love is incredibly strong and present in all of us. I'd like to read two passages from the love poems of Rumi. The first reading is uh, Looking for Love. A strange passion is moving in my head. My heart has become a bird which searches in the sky. Every part of me goes in different directions. Is it really so that the one I love is everywhere? And the second is the meaning of love. Both light and shadow are the dance of love. Love has no cause. It is the astrolabe of God's secrets. Lover and loving are inseparable and timeless. Although I may try to describe love when I experience it, I am speechless. Although I may try to write about love, I am rendered helpless. My pen breaks and the paper slips away at the ineffable place where lover, loving, and loved are one. Every moment is made glorious by the light of love. Well, with words like that, is it any wonder that we're all looking for love? And sometimes in the wrong places, sometimes in the right places, but sometimes it's, it's difficult for us to find our way. The song I'm going to play for you first is called Learn to Love. That's your cue, Mike. <laughs> And it was inspired uh, from working with a group of people on a project that was bringing a message of love and unity through love. One of the topics that came up was loving the unlovable. Sometimes in our need for love, we are judgmental of ourselves and others. I know that I've been in a place where I felt unloved and unlovable, and many people have. This song was written to open our hearts and minds to knowing that we are lovable no matter what. Learn to 
chooses me About 10 years ago, my calling to write more from my heart in and about faith became very apparent. No matter what I've set out to write in these last 10 years, most frequently it becomes about faith, hope, and love. It was pretty directed. The Dalai Lama said, ultimately, the reason why love and compassion bring the greatest happiness is simply that our nature cherishes them above all else. The need for love lies at the very foundation of human existence. It results from the profound interdependence we all share with one another. I believe that I am, we are, our brothers and sisters keeper. And this next song is about that, it's entitled Love One Another.
you gotta do is look inside process of preparing for this talk, I happened to watch this incredible documentary about Kybera. I don't know if any of you know about Kybera. It's one of, it's located in Kenya and it's the largest slum in Africa and one of the largest slums on the planet. I realized that my talk was not just about my journey, but about the journey our planet is on and the need for love. Kybera is home to over a million people. The conditions are beyond the comprehension of most of us and truly horrendous. But in the midst of this chaos and devastation, a man named Kennedy Odede, who grew up in Kybera, found that he was driven to change. Change the world, change his world, and change the world around him. The need for love that he felt for himself and for the people living in Kybera allowed him to change his circumstance, no matter how difficult. In 2004, while working in a factory, he saved 20 cents and purchased a soccer ball and started the Shining Hope for Communities movement. It's, the acronym is SHAFCO. Now, obviously, there's more to it than buying the soccer ball. But that was the impetus that he used to communicate to his community, primarily through children. And it um, targets young girls in particular. It began an evolution and a revolution in what was happening in Kybera. It has become the largest grassroots organization in this slum and is now known worldwide. Entirely and formally educated, this man had the courage to write and apply to Wesleyan University. As I understand it, he actually wrote it on a piece of paper in pencil and submitted it. And he received a full scholarship and graduated with honors. He returned to Kybera and he met his wife Jessica, an American who came to work with Shafko as a study abroad student. Together they operate Shafko in Kybera. Through their work and love, they are bringing great change to their community by empowering girls, breaking the cycle of urban poverty and creating leaders. If you want to know more about them, you can go to the web to shafco.org and you can find out a whole lot. What impressed me most was the love that was present in this organization and their work. The love that was shining from the faces of these young girls in this documentary was just absolutely overwhelming. You could see it in what they were doing in the classrooms, the excitement that they had for, for learning and, and gathering the information and speaking up. They were doing plays about their situations in Kybera and expressing themselves. They were singing and dancing. I was in tears watching this documentary, not tears of sadness, but tears of joy to know that there is so much hope and faith and love that this man had alone and brought it to the greater part of his community. That need for love was so great. And he heard it and he took it upon himself to make those changes. There's so many of the things that are contained in that faith, hope, and love that I write about 
And I hope that my music will inspire you to see the need for love and answer the call in whatever way that you're able to. And remembering that in the end, the love you give is equal to the love that you get. This last song is called There Is Love. So it is. And will the practitioners please surround the room? Music is the language of the soul. And so I am sorry that I'm not singing these words. But we go deeply into our center where that light is, that light of love. Beautiful, loving source. We are one with each other through song, through light, through music, through love. And it is love that heals and love that sets us free. And I claim now for each of us that we not only say these easy words, love, hope, faith, but that we set them into our footsteps, that we walk love, and we reach out to others with our hands and our arms and our physical being in love. We heard about the unlovable, the unacceptable, and sometimes we are that. And so I also speak the word that we come from that place of total acceptance and love of ourselves and others. We walk the talk. This center was started as a place of the heart 
and love. Let us keep that moving, however it manifests. And I give thanks for that great heritage of love, for the people who've come together to make it happen. I give thanks and I ask us now to just go into a moment of silence where we are surrounded by and we are that love. If you know this song, please sing with us. The chorus is, love is the opening door. Love is what we came here for. No one could offer you more. Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really seen?
Thank you. Lydia Clark, Lydia Clark. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you so much. So the time now comes to circulate our good in the form of our giving intention. So if you take your gift in your hand and place it over your heart and know that God blesses divine, divine love, blesses and so holds knowledge, all that I give, all that I give. And all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, loving source. And so it is.